Hey, it's Jason here, sitting in the service department here at BNB Professional Plumbing and Air in Clearwater, Florida. But that is not the point of the video. The point of this video is to very quickly talk about one of the biggest mistakes I see people making when they're trying to buy their first business. When they're trying to buy their first business. And really, it's, it's very simple. What I see people often doing, these are people I work with directly at jasonpaulrogers.com. These are people that write to me in DMs or in the YouTube comments. What I see, one sec here, I got a call coming in. I will call you back. What I see is uh, people taking far too creative paths towards getting their first deal done. And I'll give you a couple of examples. Firstly, I see people who try to buy businesses that have no profit and they're literally trying to value the business based on revenues alone, even though there's no taxable income that the business is, is able to show. Now, I can tell you right off the gate that that will not work unless you're going to be paying cash, meaning you're very wealthy and you're just paying cash for a business. No lender is going to finance a business that doesn't show taxable income. Period. Period. It's that, it's that simple. Next, I see people who suddenly are getting involved in startup-like ideas where they want to somehow raise capital and invest in a startup. Well, if you're trying to invest in startups, usually speaking, you need to be a venture capitalist. You need to have a lot of capital, a lot of, a lot of liquidity. And that's a whole other thing. You can go to Silicon Valley for that. Okay, but... but this is for the audience in the community that wants to buy a profitable business. If you want to buy a profitable business, then buy a profitable business. What a concept. And only focus on profitable business targets. Meaning, if it's not profitable, kick it to the curb. And here's another one. If it's a $50 million company, ignore it. You're not qualified enough to buy the company. If it's $200,000 in revenue, Kick it to the curb. It's too small. It doesn't have enough meat on the bone to support you. You're looking for companies that are doing between one to $5 million in revenue for that first acquisition. You want to go to the SBA. You want to finance it using SBA financing. 80% is going to be in the first position loan. 20 or so percent is going to be in seller finance, maybe 10 or 15 or 20%. And then you're going to bring 5% of the purchase price in cash. You can either use your own cash or an investor's cash. And that's how you're going to finance your first business. The business needs to be profitable. That profit needs to be shown on the tax returns, and you want to pay three times historical earnings as shown on the tax returns when buying the business. The mistake people make is they look at all these other things that glitter that actually are not gold. And here's the last point I want to make clear as well. When you're looking at companies, if they do not meet those very explicit parameters, throw them out immediately. Do not Take your time negotiating companies that don't fit into this clear square box. If they're too big, throw them out. If they're too small, throw them out. If they don't have profit on their tax returns, throw them out. If they're not in the sector that you're trying to buy a business in, throw them out. A lot of first-time business buyers, they get caught up in all these distractions like, oh, but that could be kind of cool. Oh, that could be kind of interesting. Oh, what about that? Look, we don't have a lot of time here. When you're trying to buy your first business, you don't have forever to screw around. You got to stay focused and close your deal. And that's really how you do it, by ignoring the BS. Now with that, I got to take this call. I'll talk to you. Very last point. I know someone here is going to be saying, but I'm ambitious. I'm not just trying to make a couple million bucks. I'm trying to be a billionaire, a trillionaire. Why wouldn't I be buying bi bigger businesses out of the gate? I'm not saying not to buy bigger businesses. What I'm saying is your first business, if you don't have a high net worth, should be a business that you can get closed on relatively simply. Close your first deal. Then, once you have a track record and you've actually done something in the M&A community, then you can go out and hunt larger deals. I see a lot of people who comment on you, you know, on YouTube is like, "Oh, but I'm going to buy my first business. It's going to be a half a billion dollar business and da 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 da." Look, I have never seen anyone who says that be successful. I wish that weren't the case. But in reality, a slightly more pragmatic approach of, oh, I don't know, what a concept. Get a first down and build some momentum from there. Newton said it best. That which is at rest stays at rest. That which is in motion stays in motion. It's literally the first law of physics. Abide by the first law of physics. That's my recommendation for you. What a concept. Abide by the law of physics. Get your first deal done. Get in the game, and then if you want to go buy bigger businesses at higher multiples, go for it. If you want to keep buying smaller businesses and create a multiple arbitrage, great. We can talk about what to do as far as strategy after you get in the game, but for most people, they never get in the game. Thus, that conversation doesn't even matter. Get in the game. This video is really how I would do it.